Hello 108 students, Mr. McHugh back here with you. Going to wrap up page 3 of section 8.1. Getting started with radicals. And we're going to do some graphing here. And so on the last, uh, last page and last video, we talked about the uh, parent graphs of the square root function and cube root functions. And so in your homework, what are you going to do if they ask you to take the square root of x minus 3? And again, you see f of x, it's a function. Uh, you could put the y there to help you out. And the key thing you want to remember here is that you can never take the square root of a negative number. Okay, So you only want to have a value of 0 inside the radicand. And so blank minus 3 would give you 0. And the answer is what? 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0. So start with x equal 3. Remember, your, your expanded xy table. Input, process. Here's your output, IPO, and write the x comma y order pair. Notice I have f of x in there, and go ahead and plot. Okay, so you put a 3 in, 3 minus 3 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, and there's your first ordered pair, 3 comma 0. And so right off the bat, <clears throat> as far as picking where the graph goes, you could see the whole parent graph moved and shifted 3 units to the right and um, the rest of the data here backs that up here. Now notice I put 4 in because 4 minus 3 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, 4 comma 1. But then I jumped down to 7. Why did I do that? Now you could have put 5 in there, but you're not going to get a perfect square root when you take it, so you want to make life easy for yourself. I did a little uh, rigging up here. 7 minus 3 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, 7 comma 2. And you're kind of getting the idea. Put 12 in because 12 minus 3 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. And there you go. Okay. So um, use the expanded xy graph. Notice that the whole parent graph is going to move. Um, whatever units in here. If this would have been a plus 3, it would have gone over to here. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. It would have started here and gone. Okay. So that's how you're going to do this. Now, um, I did not do it on my class notes, but example 3b works with a cubic function here. I just want to, want to write this here. Take the cube root of x, but then have plus 2 to it. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> I do ex do encourage you to do the xy table here. I think I'm going to kind of rush this a little bit faster here. But So the original graph from the last page when you do the parent goes like this. And I, what, I want, what I want you to see here is uh, um, when you put um, negative 8 in. Well, actually, I, I want you to put 0 in. Excuse me. If you put 0 in your cube root of 0 is 0 plus 2. So when your when your x is 0, the y output turns out to be um, 2 because the Q, I said this before. Cube root of 0 is 0 plus 2. So your ordered pair is 0, comma, 2. And what I want you to see here is the whole parent graph shifts two units. Now, this isn't too accurate, but you get the idea that the plus 2 moves the whole parent graph up. If it would have been a minus 2, it would have come down. Let's pick green here. And it would have went 1, 2. It would have went down like this. OK, now that's those are not too good graphs, but hopefully you get the idea. The whole parent graph moves by what the number is on the outside, and minus 2 would have been in here, plus 2 would have been up here. Okay, so let's get back to um, handling, finding the nth roots of nth power. And I guess, you know, real quick here, some of these examples we've got going here. You have 3 and you square it, you get 9. Square root of 9 is 3. And if you take negative 3 and you square it, you get the positive, you get positive 9, square root of positive 9 is 3. Now, this book goes kind of crazy with this absolute value st stuff here. I um, evaluate underneath the radical sign, then take the radical, take the square root of it. Okay, that's, that's my advice on some of these here. Um, so if I turn around here, and, and this is a mistake in the, in the notes here, get rid of the, uh, this actually does equal the absolute value of k does equal k so th this is their example C and D they're using variables in here but um, 
just just work with numbers. I tried not to put these on the homework. I think they're a tad silly here. So, you know, you're taking the square root, whether you take a negative or positive number and square it, you get a positive number, you take the square root, the result is positive. Okay, so let's go with that. Now, the tough one that gets us going here, oops, excuse me, is um, looking at, now this is on page 431, this rule. and it's in the blue boxes there <clears throat> it says uh, I, I read these things and it drives me just a tad crazy if n okay n is uh, the index number is an even positive positive integer then you're gonna take the absolute value of a and if it's uh, if n is odd take the positive integer okay now you can look at it in the book here and, and 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 these are the rules right here and and I just I don't know you look at these things and they just just drive me I don't know, a tad crazy. So, what what I try to do here, and here's some examples out of the book, but but let's 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 make this easy on ourselves. Let's let's come up with some examples we can work with. And here's what I mean: um, if I ask you to take two, a positive two, take it to the fourth, raise it to the fourth, and take the cube root. Let's just do two, um, two times two times two times two is sixteen. You take the fourth root of it what times itself four times is 16 the answer is 2 so you see that the boomerang happens and you also notice that what I try to tell class is squaring and the, and the it, square rooting of it or the fourth power they negate each other dropping the base comes out okay now that that's fine you're looking at that and then you got to deal with this scenario here but look, let's get some examples that you can work with here and so I'm gonna take the fourth root of a negative 2 all raised to the fourth power this time. Now it's a negative. Now you gotta watch this. Negative 2 multiplied by itself four times turns out to a positive 16. Take the fourth root of it and guess what? You still get 2. Okay, that's what we got over there. Then that's because the index is even. Check the index is even. Now look at almost the same problem take negative 2, take it to the third power, and then take the cube root. Okay, now, for me, the best way to do these is what's evaluate these with an intermediate step. The book wants you to learn this shortcut, and that's fine. And in example 5a and 5b, you could see where it help you out, but it's just as easy half the time. What's negative 2 cubed? I know I'm doing an easy example, but it's what? Negative 8. Can, and what can you take? Is there a number? Because it's an odd number, and the negative's inside the radical. Can you find a number that multiplied by itself three times equals negative eight? The answer is negative two. Okay, so study the differences here. You've got the odd index here and an even index here. Okay, so if it's an even index, it's going to come out a positive. If it's an odd index, it's going to come out negative. Maybe that's an easier way to remember them, I think. Okay, so with that said here, you look at this answer. Uh, it's an even. And notice that the uh, index and the uh, index number and the exponent are the same. So what's going to come out of it? If it's an even number, it's always going to be a positive. That's how I remember it. The book again loves all this absolute value stuff. It just, it, for me personally, it just drives me crazy. If you it, look, look, if you grab it, you know, use it. I'm not saying you can't. Just I think they make it confusing. Over here, I look at it, <clears throat> and I got an odd exponent. Got a negative comes out you just take the base and that's your result okay and that one you can just say like positive that the exponent and the uh, index number radical negate each other okay now this last exam these couple examples over here um, a quick way to do these is a cube root of uh, we're going to learn this later on in the chapter here, but they're saying 8 to the 12. What times itself will give you 8 to the 12? Three times. And so the shortcut of this is is to, you can't see my hand, I'm going to have to make a video here. Take the exponent, rotate it up. I'm, I'm going to have to make a, next, a video of this so you can see this gives my right hand rule. And divide it by the index number gives you a 4, so it's 8 to the 4. That's the shortcut here. Same thing. Um, now this is the exact same problem here. So, well, no, it's not. It's 12 divided by 4. So, same idea. You're going to take the exponent, take it up, divide it by the index 
4, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and it's 8 of the 3 is your answer. Okay, Mr. McHugh here. We're going to sign off here on section 8.1. Page 3 is in the books. Good job, everybody, and we will start 8.2 when I see you in the next video. Okay, goodbye.